We're going to go over to the Winner's Hotel, where their celebrations, as you saw, are in full swing. Jerk Canning is swinging down there with them. Well, Henry is here, and yes, Colm O'Rourke, of course, is his idol, but it's as a goalkeeper. Is that right? You're celebrating. Yes, we are. When I said that, I, I thought that the, for my time came to play in an all Ireland final, that Colm O'Rourke would have been long since retired, but he's still going strong. <laughs> it's a terrific day for Derry football. Fantastic day, and we worked very hard to get here. We knew that we'd have to up our game after the Dublin game to win today, and I think the Derry team deserved utmost praise because the football we played today, we've always felt that we threatened it all year, and at last it came through for us. The support you got from all parts of Derry must have made you feel absolutely delighted. Fantastic. We got a tremendous reception yesterday when we tried to leave. In fact, it took us a couple of hours to get out of Dungiven and Mahara, Mahara felt. Tremendous support the whole way down, and I think the hill today for any Derry supporter was, you know, was a sight to remember. Now, you're a school teacher. I suppose there'll be a couple of lost there coming up now. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, I think maybe give the school teaching a rest for a day or two. <laughs> Let's move on to Eamon. Eamon, a happy man. Very happy tonight, yeah. Did you believe at the outset of the campaign, at the beginning of this season, that there was an All-Ireland in this team? Well, I've been saying since the beginning of the year that 93, I thought, would be Derry's year. And after beating down and and Uri, I felt that we could go on and lift the Ulster title at least. There is a story, maybe just a rumour, but uh, during that game you were supposed to have said to the players, if you don't win this, I'm on my way back to England. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I said that or not now. I think it's a bit of a story. <laughs> we were watching you there today, going all around the ground, you were playing every ball with the players. The tension was high at, in the last ten minutes today and uh, Cork was still very dangerous, a very good team, and I was glad to hear the final whistle. What is it going to mean now to the development of Gaelic games in Derry? It's going to be tremendous for Derry football, and uh, this is something that Derry needed. They needed a lot more than Cork today, anyway. And Sam is going back. It'll be a big night in Maharaj tomorrow night. Let's say all over Derry. Thank you very much indeed. Well done to you. Indeed, I'm sure it's going to be a great night, uh, indeed a, a great week in Derry. Well, from father to son, because left half back, although he started at left corner back, of course, was Gary Coleman. Gary, was there a lot of pressure on you today, particularly when the old man was, was the manager? He's a hard man to play, so he is, you know, and I think you have to do a wee bit more to... He still wasn't too happy in the game over the day with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, your job was to mark Colin Corkery, and certainly, tactically, it seemed to work well eventually for Derry. Well, I don't know how I'd done on him for after 20 minutes I was taken off him again, so I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. You always believed, though, in Derry, even when I met you at the start of the championship, you always believed that, yes, this could be our year. You, you, you seem to have great self-belief. The only thing we wanted this year was the Sam, and we had a hard, a hard path, and I think we deserved it more than Cork, because the, the route to the final was very difficult. Was there ever a moment today when you said, yes, we have Sam? Full time. <laughs> <laughs> and not a moment before. <laughs> Well, the guy beside you, uh, Gary, when I told him he was going to be interviewed live on RT television, he said, great, I always want to be Tom Cruise of Derry. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Brawley, it's great to have you. <laughs> it's a good job I'm standing behind the bishop. <laughs> You'll be in real trouble. <laughs> One point today, Joe, and it was a beauty. <laughs> thanks, thanks. I'm just trying to ma maximize it here and exaggerate. <laughs> Was it not two points now? <laughs> <laughs> we were expecting two points, Joe Brawley. I missed another goal as well, that's another. <laughs> Great moment for you and indeed for everybody in Dungiven particularly. That was a marvellous moment. We knew we had them when they went five points up because that <laughs> tends to make dairy teams very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I could see Henry Downey getting his shoulders set, you know. <laughs> 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 Boys, uh, they've done it again here. <laughs> it was a great day, marvellous day, and, and uh, in some ways it was uh, easier than the, than the semi-final where we had maybe 15, 20 minutes up to the final whistle where Barron a sort of a sucker punch from Cork, we had the game won. You know, the pattern of the game was in Derry's favour at that stage, unlike the semi-final where we were sort of... You didn't think when John O'Driscoll got his goal that you were in deep trouble? Well, whenever they scored the goal in two points at the start of the match, I sort of, you know, got visions of Kerry's golden years, you know. Derry have experienced this sort of thing before, you know, five goals in the space of seven minutes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> little, you know, what, what's next? But uh, once we settle down, once the, once the game's settled down and the pattern of the game established itself, we get back onto the groove again and the defence sort of got very much on top. And really the two goals came, came out of the blue. I think that would be fair to say they weren't part of the pattern of the game. They were marvellous goals, but they weren't you know, in the pattern of the game. Well, I'm sure that you'll celebrate for a long time in Derry. Gary Colgan, Joe Brawley, thank you both very much indeed. All right, then the uh, celebrations continue down in the Shelburne Hotel down in Dublin. Let's rejoin Jerk Canning down there with the Derry people. Well, the sign in the background, Michael, reads, Derry does it. And Harry Chivers, county chairman, you certainly did. Oh, it was a great achievement by the, the players today and just reward for all the work that has gone on at club level, schools level, county board level, finance level, and uh, certainly makes up for all the hassle we had over tickets, more than the lack of tickets during the week. And I would like to pay tribute now to our county secretary, Patsy Mulholland and his wife Margaret and family for all the work they did, all the hassle, and apologise to all those people who didn't get tickets for the game. We just didn't have enough, but um, hopefully we'll see them all in Mahara tomorrow night or maybe early Tuesday morning. And uh, they're all welcome to come along to the goal game against the All-Ireland uh, team in Balahi on, on Wednesday night at uh, 6 o'clock, I think it is. What is it going to mean, this win today, to the development of Gaelic games all over Ulster, in particular places like Derry City? Well, we would, ex we would expect a big upsurge in the city. There, uh, there's already a lot of work going on, and uh, we would expect this will cement all the, the work that's going on at school and club level within the city. Sum up your feelings right now, Harry. Some of the feelings. There's a man called Quinn who sort of come to like him in Ulster because he hands out <laughs> cups to a lot of counties. <laughs> and they all begin with the letter D, I think, as well. Well done, that's Harry Chivers. Now, across here, Dermot Heaney. And Dermot's got something of a record, ladies and gentlemen. You've played in Croke Park. Today was your seventh time to play there in a major match, and you've never lost. That's right. I've been played there seven times, twice in the National League last year. Once this year in the National League, uh, twice in the Miners, and twice in this year's All-Ireland campaign and haven't been beat yet. Your first All-Ireland final day, what was it like? It was very scary, I think was the word I could use, and being only a Miner and I was going out into the roar of the crowd, it was very scary, but I've learned from that there, I've matured a lot, it's a great feeling today. How would you sum up today's feeling right now? Uh, it's tremendous, tremendous achievement. Uh, hasn't really sunk in yet, but... Uh, Can you contemplate what it's going to be like tomorrow night when you take that cup back to Derry? Well, there'll be thousands there in Derry tomorrow night. We're, we left Derry on Saturday, and Mara felt, Mahara, and packed, and we just decided that we couldn't come back without the cup. And now we have, and we packed tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, he's another hero, Dermot Heaney. Well done. Thanks very much. Indeed. Certainly one man I wouldn't like to be marking at any day of the week, uh, particularly in All-Ireland final, is Anthony Tohill at midfield. Uh, Anthony, it's been a great year for you, of course. You won the Sigerson Cup with Queen's uh, earlier this year, but today must be the highlight. Oh, definitely. Um, today has definitely been the highlight of my career so far. Um, I think it's not only a good day for myself, but for everyone associated with football in Derry. Um, we're going to enjoy ourselves for a while. You're only just 22. What, what's left to achieve? Oh, I wouldn't mind doing it again, Marty, you know. <laughs> The worst thing is about one of us uh, start to get greedy and um, definitely Derry will, will want to, to repeat what they did this year. Now you're lucky enough, you're not going back to uh, Queen's University for another week, so you're, you're going to be free to enjoy the celebrations. Uh, I would say we'll enjoy ourselves when we get up, get up to Queen's as well. Indeed, well Anthony Toll, well done. Fergal McCusker is also with me. Fergal, certainly you were one of the players to show there was great depth of talent in Derry this year because yourself, Dermot McNichol and others were finding it difficult to get on the first 15. Well, I think the secret of the team has been a, a strong bench. Somebody <laughs> filmed a bum there. <laughs> no, the secret of the team has been a, a strong bench. You know, throughout the campaign, we've had three or four subs, you know, three subs that were, you know, equally good coming on. Ragnar has crashed. <laughs> no, it was very enjoyable to come on today. I must admit, T to start the game, you know, I was up against serious competition from like Danny Cohen and Carl Lema. Just took my chance, and, and that was it. Eamon Coleman has always emphasised the importance of the panel, and certainly Derry's panel proved that they have great talent, obviously good enough to win the All-Ireland. 
Well, I wouldn't like to be picking a team to start in the championship next year after, after that campaign. It's going to be very tough, but we'll party a bit and then we'll, we'll sort that one out. Very well done. Anthony Toll, Fergus McCusker, thank you both very much and well done. I have uh, Damien Barton with me here now. And Damien, I suppose you're one of the longer serving fellows. You came on the team around about 1980. That's right, Jerry. I'm, I'm there a long time. Uh, today is a great reward for all those years. Did you ever think it would come? I don't think uh, in, in reality we ever thought it would come until the last couple of years. One in the National League was a big plus to us and obviously the success that Down had opened the way for a lot of Ulster teams. Is there greater self-belief now up in Ulster that uh, Down can do it, Dunny Gall can do it, Derry did it? Ah oh, well, I mean, we took inspiration from both their ones but we knew within ourselves, I mean, there's always been great footballers in Derry and it was a matter of getting the house organised, so to speak, and uh, we knew we had the ability from the start of the year to, to lift the Sam Maguire. You had Eamon Coleman and you had Mickey Moran and you had some very good selectors and people in the background there. They did a very good job, obviously. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's more than them. They did a good job this year, but uh, we have all come through school football from we were no size, and I think today is... Uh, culmination of all the work, the hard work that every club and every school has done throughout those years. Dermot, I just want to move across here for a second, and, or Damien rather, and talk to Dermot uh, McNichol. You came on as a sub, you had a great old time. Oh, uh, Jerry, I was very happy uh, just getting in there, you know, for the last 35 minutes. You know, uh, it's every, every player's dream to, to play in a learn final, you know, and uh, I was just happy to be part of it. You were a minor star back in 83, you played in the Compromise Rules series, you've had a checkered career, played in Australia as well. Is this the pinnacle of your achievements? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be fighting for a position next year again, I can tell you that. But, uh, no, uh, I mean, there's, there's a couple of fellas, you know, that you can, you can just look and, and have total respect for, you know, and that's... I've, I've played with them for years, and that's Tony Scullion and Brian McGilligan, and I can tell you what, they deserve in the <laughs> Those, those, those two players in uh, particular have, have been playing with Derry when, uh, you know, things haven't been going so well and they've just kept plugging away and I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm just so happy for them. I'm just proud to be part of the whole thing, you know. Dermot, I always was told that Derry was a great place for a bar of a song. And I haven't heard the, um, I haven't heard Danny Boy at all so far today. Now, but maybe yourself and Joe Brawley would combine and do a little kind of ensemble here. Huh? Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, uh, Joe can do the thing and I just do the mime. <laughs> well, where is Joe? Where is Joe Brawley? Is he going to sing for us? Are we going to upkeep the reputation of dairy people as good singers? He's coming. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what words you were miming towards me that time. Could you not get me out, fellow? <laughs> record. In you go together, guys. What are you going to sing? I think uh, something appropriate now. Come on. What like? I have full confidence. I tell you to get up, John McGurk. Well, Johnny, 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 Johnny,
Well, well done, well done indeed. To so, so all down there in Derry, particularly Joe Brawley for uh, getting that thing going there. And Johnny Dog, I think he said in the middle of it all as well.